will be making the games that define the future of Indian games. So just think about that. India is a blank canvas. And game designers really have to figure out, well, either take this as a challenge or an opportunity. We have the opportunity to draw whatever we like here, and that will be perpetuated and become the industry of the future. Will, we are essentially, right now, setting the standards the same way uh, the joystick set the standards back in the day. So uh, you need to draw on that canvas something that you think your players will find appealing, because after all, we're in a commercial world. And to do that, we have to go through these steps of empathy. So we did this at Moonfrog by uh, simply just asking questions. Who are you? What do you aspire for? What kind of people uh, are playing these games? Uh, so we paid attention to what they said, what they did, what they thought, and what they felt. Uh, we took defining quotes. Uh, we uh, took down notes of what we thought people thought. <laughs> and also what we thought they felt. They felt. OK, here's a really interesting study by MTV. Uh, they, and it mirrors exactly what uh, we found in our own surveys, where they asked, what do you aspire for to anybody aged 30 and under? And they surveyed 40 cities. And you might, the, the results are actually quite profound. Uh, number one is see the seven wonders of the world. Number two, go backpacking around the world. Number three, go to Disneyland. So these aspirations are global. They're not local. They're, everybody, despite your background, despite your culture, you aspire for the same things. Uh, unless there is a Disneyland in India that I'm not aware of, like Disneyland Delhi or something. <laughs> All right. So that's the most important. If you take away one thing, is that we aspire for the same things. And you really need to think about what this means. So what do you aspire to race? One of these or one of these? No takers? No? Well, Ferrari. I would rather drive a Ferrari. Where would you rather play cricket? On the street or in a stadium? What do you aspire to do? That's the question. Some people may enjoy playing on the street, but how many people aspire to play on the street? OK, so this is a problem that a lot of developers have when they come to India uh, or try and localize their content to any country, really. They try and skin it. They try and think, OK, I'm going to insert cultural motifs and objects into my game. And somehow, uh, the people of that demo will find it appealing and are more likely to download my game. Very logical thought process happens a lot. Uh, if you don't know what done skinning is, it's a very simple process, as the name might suggest. And we're just going to have a crash course in that. So you take a popular genre, any genre, and you insert these culturally relevant things in there. And then you sort of sit back and think, yeah, that's going to work. OK. So let's do that. Let's take a popular match three game, I don't know, uh, with candies. And let's just assume, I, I want to make this game. I want to make a game for France. OK, all right, done. Yeah, all right. Good job. Excellent design. OK, maybe I want to, I don't know, maybe I want the uh, UK audience to also appreciate this game. All right, T, that'll work. OK, I love it. So as a British guy, I don't want to play a match three game with tea. I want to drink tea. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so if there's still any doubt regarding this, uh, imagine if Angry Birds were bald eagles. Would that then be more popular in America? Uh, I don't think so. It's already very widely popular. Was Sun Dog Millionaire ever a popular movie in India? A movie made by the West uh, for India? Uh, no, it never was. OK, so this is the thing about stereotypes. I don't look like this. Uh, I don't own, even own a top hat, although maybe, maybe one day. <laughs> uh, so when you're making a game for, uh, I've seen local developers do this as well. They project their own understandings of a culture uh, into a game, and often they're wrong. And they also f miss the finite, like the minutia of uh, things like appeal. So uh, stereotypes can also work if you consider them from the local perspective. So as part of our surveys. We asked, what, did, what kind of terms, words, do you think of when we say things like action hero? Uh, what movies do you think of? Who's your favorite actor? And uh, so we could get a decent uh, sort of stereotype map of, uh, uh, from, the, from local people who played our game so that we could accurately make content for them. And they were much different. These are my own sort of, I think of Die Hard, Terminator, and Rambo, whereas uh, the average answers we got were Doom, Chalet, and Krish. 
so you can take those stereotypes and you can create your content for that. Uh, stereotypes miss appeal. Like uh, stereotypes are broad. Appeal is a very subtle thing. So if I want to find out, I don't know, which, which icon do my players prefer? Uh, how, if I use stereotypes, there's no way I'm going to find that out. I can't put a samosa or an idli on there and think, yeah, the guys in India all love this thing. Uh, I want to find the subtleties, so I'm going to survey that. In fact, just, just now, which, which do you prefer, the left or the right? Okay, who prefers this one? Hands up. Okay. And this one? All right, job done. All right. <laughs> I know which I'm using. <laughs> all right, let's assume you've done all this now. Uh, you've understood your audience, uh, their aspirations, their age, their income. You've designed a game intelligent, uh, intelligently for them, uh, considering their perspectives, finding those that, what, they, what appeals to them exactly. But you failed to do one thing, which was get into bed with them, which in hindsight is probably a terrible way to put this. It's still legal. You have to get into, <laughs> into bed and have it remain legal, if you see my, my point. What I really mean is get intimate. Uh, because uh, as Anshu was talking about uh, retention, uh, it, I like to think of it as a romantic relationship between yourself and your player. You have to constantly touch base with them, give them a reason to come back to you, give them special events, date nights, things like this. Uh, so it's a, an awful lot like a romantic relationship. And romantic relationships without intimacy generally die. <laughs> so get intimate. So how, how do you go about doing this? Uh, you can look at your metrics. They'll tell you a lot about your users. But I, I, I mean, I love metrics, but they have their limitations, terrible, terrible limitations. You can easily over-pivot uh, over towards one metric, like retention. People are coming to your game every day. Great, but are they playing? Actually, are they just coming in and collecting stuff and leaving? Uh, they're biased towards the short term. It's very easy to think, OK, how do I increase this next week versus the week after? You can't A-B test like super large features. Uh, and most importantly, they can't tell you how people are feeling. I look at the numbers daily, and I, I'm always thinking, right, how, are you having a good time right now? You're leaving at this point. Is that because you're upset? Oh, I don't know. Uh, metrics can't possibly tell you. So even when we went over there and asked people how they were feeling, we came across another problem, was that people don't know how they feel either. So uh, what are you supposed to do? Uh, so it's very rare to find somebody who can accurately transcribe their feelings. Uh, and furthermore, the mind is making all these super small unconscious decisions constantly and that people can't communicate. And it, the problem for India is that there's this language barrier and it's further obfuscating the truth there. So we at Moonfrog, we developed this technique. Uh, we call it Puva. And uh, it's a way to get as close as possible to the users with it still remaining legal. Uh, so it involves getting inside the player's head, seeing what they see, and capturing all of those actions and those subtleties. And we think this technique really uh, informed our thinking. So I have, uh, for the first time, NGCC exclusive uh, some video of this in action. I'm going to find my mouse. Okay. <laughs> So this is of the first time user experience of Team Patty. And we're just seeing from the first person view what the player is doing. Okay, he's trying to sit at a poker table, but he can't. He can't figure it out. Like, what, what are these buttons? He taps on the tap to sit tutorial text, thinking that'll work. He still can't figure it out. Okay, after three attempts, he finally clicks on this, on the down button. So, uh, we shot 10 hours worth of this footage of people going through our flows, of people uh, getting confused, people asking questions. We did surveys. And this informed pretty much everything I've been talking about, about cognitive preconditions, like how, uh, what symbols these people were familiar with, and, uh, and so on. OK, so getting intimate goes more than strapping cameras to people's faces. Uh, you need to get embedded socially and culturally. One of the questions that we wanted to find out, well, was whether or not people played alone or together. Very simple question. How do people play games? Is it alone or together? And obviously, there's a, a certain amount of people who prefer to play alone. Uh, some people prefer to play together. But uh, what we found that actually a lot of people, uh, gaming even on mobile, is, can be a very social thing. People. Uh, 
they, they go into their living rooms the same way I, I used to as a kid and uh, bring in a bunch of friends and we used to all pick up a controller and play on the N64. Uh, now, instead of grabbing a controller, they pull out their smartphones and play a game together in the same room. So as a designer, how can you leverage that knowledge? Uh, we also found that the way that they communicated was a lot different. Uh, WhatsApp was very popular, Facebook not so much, and SMS was almost non-existent. So you can figure out how to leverage those channels. Also culturally, uh, we found that there are times of the year in India where people play games more than others. So a very obvious example is Diwali. People play Team Party a lot during Diwali, <laughs> like a serious amount, and we saw huge amounts of traffic there. So you can actually make your game unique, and because nobody else is doing this, by uh, creating your content in schedule to the cultural calendar, if you excuse the alliteration there. <clears throat> OK. Uh, all right, so just to conclude, uh, we've understood the Indian gamers. We designed a game intelligently for them, and then we've got an intimate in order to find out exactly uh, what they want. Okay, so hopefully you can take this kind of knowledge and take it forward and spread the love. Okay, that's all I have. If there are no questions, you can go for lunch. <laughs> Questions? Lunch. Lunch. Question. No, lunch. Get out. Lunch. <laughs> All right. The toes there. Um, questions, people? Nobody? Dude, make up your mind. You have a question. Okay. Hi. Yeah. So this is uh, this was a, first of all a very interesting talk, and this is a, pr a problem I'm personally trying to solve as well. Um, so is it fair to say from uh, the entire talk? Uh, designing games for India is more of a UX problem rather than a game design problem. And I mean, I'll talk about two outliers over here. Like, we know Angry Birds and we know Candy Crush have fundamentally worked very well, even though they were not at all designed for India. Mm. And I mean, are we trying too hard? That's my question over here. Okay. Um, so, this is about designing games specifically for India. There'll always be people who are more globally minded, those players. In fact, the, the early adopters of smartphones. In fact, I'll make a prediction now that uh, sooner or later, Team Party will overtake Candy Crush quite happily. Uh, we're not trying too hard. Uh, and actually, it's about making, it's more about finding what games are, play, are most relevant to the country. That's the design challenge, and then making that more enjoyable. For example, I, I don't know, take a random example, like Karam, uh, or Karam, sorry. It's played by everybody, but how could you gamify that? That's a design challenge. All right, so I don't know, it's a very simple problem. Uh, UX is probably the larger part of what we do. Uh, Indian style game, uh, will they work in other countries? Uh, no. How, how, or uh, if uh, we want to make them play, how to, how to make them play for... Hmm? So you have a huge challenge there. How are you supposed to teach a game in, like, from scratch to somebody of a different culture, a different demo, right? They've never played Team Party in the UK. Uh, you, you're giving yourself, it's just too difficult, and they probably already play poker and already know the rules. Why would they play Team Patty versus poker in the first place? So, uh, I, I don't think you should try and export games. That doesn't really work. We're trying to make games for India that, uh, we're trying to scratch a need that hasn't been scratched before. Okay, so we have to start So it's about making in India and delivering for India. It's not about making in India and exporting out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, hi, I have a question here. Uh, so this is uh, not relevant to games like say Teen Patti, but other games where, and you were talking about stereotyping earlier, right? So as a game writer, designer, instructional designer, where a lot of my games are revolve around stories, 
one challenge that i keep on facing is that every story needs to start with a save the world kind of a scenario and i am like hitting a block with it like are there, do you have any ideas or suggestions on storytelling for example that is not maybe mythology based or something where mm. you don't just have to save the world like do this or the game will, or the, you know it's game over if you don't save the world essentially that's the storyline for all games do you have any ideas or suggestions on how else what else we could do with it um so stories are really powerful and i think they're really being underutilized right now people especially in india you find that more systemic games are more popular uh so I think there is a need there for a good Indian story driven game in order to go about doing that I would uh, I know we talked about stereotypes but uh, you can apply the same logic to stories you can ask or you can tell stories from the locals perspective uh so for example somebody in Mumbai who wants to become a mafia boss is actually quite a nice story which is local and relevant uh and doesn't have to be so I guess stereotypical like uh it doesn't have to involve mythology or anything like that and even when you consider mythology you really have to make a judgment how many people really know the stories in detail um is it your target audience or is it somebody else so i hope that helps okay questions yes um uh very nice talk olivia uh, just wanted to check how ready do you think india is about a uh, games related to augmented reality where people users can actually interact with uh, you know um, could be um, things around them like maybe a, a guy in mumbai could just reach out to india gate and achieve a target or a goal or something like that How, you know just interacting with the places and uh, i think there, there is an advancement there but that is far off in the future so what we're seeing is that mobile networks are becoming a lot better in india and people are starting to connect a lot more mm -hmm. so that's the thing about why one of the reasons i believe team patty is so popular because it's one of the first games where you can just go on your phone and connect to people instantly and have this instant like pvp scenario mm -hmm. uh going a step beyond that i'm not sure if there is even a global demand for virtual reality right now it's debatable whether people even want that experience let alone in india So uh, I like to think of the trend setters like the western markets as tectonic plates that send out these shock waves of uh, of fads that sort of tend to reach India maybe 3 4 years late uh and I'm not sure there's even been uh, a shock wave of VR which is even happened there yet so you'd have to wait 5 uh, or 10 years Thanks. in order for that to arrive questions any more is that it cool okay mr jones you're free to go thank you very much ali that was fantastic that was amazing okay wait don't go away we've got something for you right. folks thanks for coming we break for lunch and uh, we have the next session in uh, one hour